We were talking about baptism, uh, but I, I really our subject matter <coughs> during this month has been about uh, eternal life. We've been dealing with eternal life, but we landed here on the baptism of John, John the Baptist, you know, the baptism of John, and we were, uh, the question that I was uh, talking to the class about, uh, John, the, John the Baptist, his baptism, he's speaking of baptism before Christ died, right? Before he died and was buried and resurrected. John the Baptist is talking about repent and be baptized. And so, uh, but John's baptism, you're going to see in the scriptures, John's baptism is pointing to Christ. He's baptizing in water, but it's pointing to Christ. He's telling them to believe on the one whom God has sent. So John's baptism is speaking on believe and in Christ. He's baptized and telling them to believe in Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. And that, that was, really it was up under the law. But it was foreshadowing what was to come. So John is talking about a baptism, believing on Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. And so when they were being baptized, the scripture talks about, uh, you know, it says that they were confessing their sins. Well, something about uh, the, uh, uh, those that were under the law. When they brought their, their sacrifice, well, excuse, when they brought their, their, uh, their offering to be sacrificed, they were confessing their sin to be forgiven. Yes. Now listen, listen, they're bringing their offering, the lamb or the gold that they're bringing. They're bringing it to the priest. This is a confession of my sin. And they're, what they're confessing is that their sin is, is, uh, is just be, getting ready to be forgiven. They're confessing the forgiveness of their sin by bringing the offering to be sacrificed. Say that again. They're confessing their sin by bringing the offering to be ready to be sacrificed. Because one thing the priest knows is that everybody's in the need of what? Forgiveness. So they're confessing their, their sins by bringing their offering to be sacrificed. If you're not bringing the offering to be sacrificed, you're saying you're without sin. So in the Old Testament, this is what God gave the Jewish people to do. The Day of Atonement. To bring an offering to be sacrificed once a year. They did other uh, sacrifices too throughout their uh, about the law of different things that they had to do. But this one here was when God would meet the high priest in the most holy place. And he would bring the blood of the bull or the goat, whatever, he would take it in there and God would receive the blood. And that means that they were forgiven for a year. And then once a year, they would bring that offering. But every household had to bring its own lamb that represent that house. So I have a quick question. So, uh -huh. When they brought the sacrifice, it was a, uh, it, it, it was an animal or whatever it may be. Uh -huh. Was there did their heart necessarily have to be in it, or was it just here to here take the the sacrifice and that's it? I'm forgiven. Did it have to be in their heart as well? Or did well, you you know, um, I think it, it kind of both ways here. Okay, first you're giving me a law and telling me what I have to do. You know, I have to participate in this. So the animal has to be. A, a animal without spot or wrinkle, the lamb has to be perfect. without spot, has to be perfect, without blemish. And you have to feed it, take care of it. And so, when the time came, you know, uh, and matter of fact, they couldn't make a pet out of it. Johnny couldn't play with, the, couldn't play with this Maybe one. Maybe something sacred or yeah, something. Yeah, this was set, up, this was set aside for, for, the, for the purpose of that. Uh, and so, now, we, we can see them, okay, you can be doing it as a law, you know, but then it can turn into the heart. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, when you when we're when we're seeing the meaning of what it means. You know, it, it, like like a child. A child doesn't know, but when he grows up in it, this is why. And daddy, why why we do this? Mm -hmm. You know, why we do this, mom? Why we doing this? With the, this is why we do this because of our sin. But what is sin? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. You know, okay. and so it, you you can see it start to to deal with their heart. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm going to go ahead of myself, but we're going to get into it. Um, 
when John comes and telling them to repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Now, repentance has, has, has a few definitions on it. Because sometimes we put repentance with sin and sin alone. We, for some reason, we go straight to sin. But repentance also means a change of mind. A, a change of mind. Your mind is being changed. And it has to be a message to change my mind. If you just came to me and tell me to repent, repent and believe on Jesus. Repent. What do I? Okay. Well, and and we were taught repent, stop sinning, Run and come to sin. Jesus. Um, you can take this or leave it. That's not what it's saying to us, and that's what we've been practicing. The message has to come to cause us to repent. It's the gospel message that we're hearing, and what is it saying to us that we turn? To Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. You're telling me something about Christ that causes me to turn to him for forgiveness for my sins. So John the Baptist is saying repent for remission of your sins. Now, what we have to look at, like I just described, they were already in a practice about bringing an offering to be sacrificed for the forgiveness of their sins. They were already doing that. So when John is telling them to repent, he's telling them uh, to turn away from, in other words, uh, uh, the way that they're seeking forgiveness in the animal. He's telling them to repent and see the forgiveness in Christ. He's telling them to come away from the sacrifice of the animal and receive Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. So he's telling, he's, he's giving them that you know, he come the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So he's telling them to, to turn from the offering of a bull and a goat or a lamb and your forgiveness is found in him. This is what repentance means. Like replacing it. Yeah, yeah, you know. So for us, I, I was thinking about this. I said, I said, wait a minute. Before I came to Jesus, before I even knew about Jesus, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't, I wasn't believing in anybody for the forgiveness of my sins. I wasn't believing in no one for the forgiveness of my sins until I heard about Jesus, that who died for my sins. So I wasn't trusting in, in no religion, no law. God bless you, my brother. Where'd you go? Where'd I go? Well, like he, he didn't see you yeah. for many years. You just well, he grew. You know, you know, when kids grow up, they go their own way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Got their own lives, you know. Oh, okay. That's not right. But I haven't seen him. Was, ooh, I haven't seen him probably about ooh, it's been a minute. More than twenty years. Yeah. Probably. Uh, no, not not that long. Maybe fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> maybe kid. Maybe kid. You know, because I've probably seen him, he probably didn't see me. Yeah. yeah. Oh. See, I didn't see him, he didn't see me. You know. Okay. But anyhow, uh, where was I at? I was. Uh, the repentance. Okay, so I was saying that that I wasn't trusting anyone for the forgiveness of my sins until I heard about Christ. I was not a religious person. 
I wasn't raised in a religious home, so I was, you know, living life like everybody else. As an unbeliever, you knew about yeah, sin. Yeah, yeah, as an unbeliever. I knew about sin before as believing uh, somebody for the forgiveness of my sins. No. So it wasn't, it wasn't repenting coming from believing, believing in somebody else who was forgiving my sins and I started believing in Jesus. No. We all heard about Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. They they heard about God forgiving their sins, which God has forgiven us our sins through Christ. Right. But understand what I'm saying. So the Jew, the children of Israel, they believe in the offering of an animal for the forgiveness of their sins. Yeah. So when he says repent, he telling them to come away from that. Oh. Okay. Because your forgiveness is found in Christ. Okay. Okay. So when he says repent, this is what he tells them to do. So to, stop that practice. Yeah. Yeah. Stop that practice coming over here. And so, but but what he's but what he's saying is um, uh, that he because Jesus has not yet died right. and has not yet resurrected, so John is the forerunner, and he's saying repent for the remission of sins because your sins is, is found in Christ. So when John is baptizing, he's baptizing them because they believed on who who was to come. Right. Okay. So the so so the water did not forgive them. We're not forgiven by going down in water. And which some do teach that, but we're not. The, the going down in the water was identifying that Jesus is the one who forgives me for my sins. That's why I'm that's why I'm being baptized in the water. Because he has forgiven me. For us, when, when, before we go in the water, we need to know our sins have already been forgiven. That's why we get baptized. And we're identifying with his death and his resurrection. Okay. That's what we're doing. When we're, when we're getting ready to be baptized, we are, are being identified with his death and his resurrection. <clears throat> and so for them, like I said, for them, it was uh, um, turning away from the, uh, the Ju Jude Judaism of the way they were doing it to Christ. And this is where it gets sticky because, you know, they, they crucified Jesus, right, yes. you know, for that. So when, when, when Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, uh, uh, John the Baptist also talked about the kingdom of God, you know, uh, 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 repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, Jesus comes from the kingdom of God, right? Yes. yes. Most definitely. And he came in the flesh to do what? To die. To die for, to die yeah, for our to sins. Die for our sins. What he came for. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's forgiveness is here. It is present. And Jesus is that. And so another thing I, what came to my mind was I, I was meditating on this and I said, wow. Now, now listen to this. Just, just hear this statement. Uh, through the power of forgiveness, through the power of forgiveness, Jesus raised the dead. He healed the sick. He opened up blind eyes. All the miracles that he was doing, he did it in the power of forgiveness. I want you to think about something. And if, 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 if you read your Bibles, when Jesus got ready to heal someone, he would say, your sins be forgiven. And then he would heal them. That's why they would say, you, you blasphemy. No one can forgive sins but God. Well, who do you think I am? You know, and they're not receiving that. And so several places, he is saying that, that, that he's, for, he's forgiven sin. The woman called him adultery. You know, what, what, what do you say, Master? He said, the one without sin cast the first stone. Yep. Neither, he said, well, you're, where are your accusers? Neither do I accuse you. Your sins are forgiven. So, so that's, what the, excuse me, that's what the Pharisees were saying that he was doing blasphemy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because okay. he, he, no one can forgive sins but God. Well, that's why he came. Okay. Jesus is the forgiveness of God. So when we're receiving Christ, we're, no, receiving, we're, we're receiving the forgiveness of God. That's in Christ Jesus. When we receive in Christ, we receive an eternal life. The life of God has purpose for us. That's in Christ Jesus. Everything that we have, God has purpose for us to have, the promises that he 
want us to have that leads to eternal life. Those things that are eternal is through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So uh, let's look at some scriptures and, and bear out what some things I'm saying. Uh, 